Mathematica is an excellent tool to visualize mathematical structures and I want to, with this lab, go over some of the basics of how to get started plotting functions using the plot function. But not only that, we're going to look at some plot options to show how to make our plots actually look pretty good. The basic structure of the plot function looks like this. We have plot and inside the plot function we have some sort of function we want to graph. So in this case sine x squared plus x and then we want to put the independent variable over some sort of range. Now keep in mind I have a note here Mathematica is very sensitive to syntax. Okay, So capital letters are for built-in functions. So if I don't capitalize sine it won't work. Brackets are for function inputs. Braces like we have over here with the with the x from negative 4 to 4 are for lists, arrays, and points. In Mathematica's mind, they are not the same thing. You have to keep that in mind. All right, so here's a graph of the sine x squared plus x. Just as an exercise, we're going to go over several. We want to graph cosine x over x squared plus 1, but what we want to do is we want to define it as dx first of all. Okay, so if I define d of x like this, this is incorrect. Because since I'm defining a function, I need to declare what my independent variable is, which is the x. And the way I do that is putting an underscore in my definition. So I say d of x underscore, and that tells Mathematica from then on, on the other side of the equal sign, all the x's are variables. Okay, so there's my function. And I want to plot it, so I'm going to plot. And I recommend using the outside in approach to, to writing this. So I write plot open bracket, close bracket. On the inside, I have d of x, and I want x going from the requested negative 3 pi to 3 pi, and there's my function. That's it. Now, this doesn't show me everything I may want. By default, Mathematica just guesses on the y-axis. Some of the options we're going to look at is how to specify exactly what we want. Now let's move to framing options, and this includes like plot range, aspect ratio, and labeling, and I'll explain what those mean. And for these examples, we're going to use this sine x squared plus x is our function. And first of all, uh, plot range will be the first one we look at, but what I want to mention is anytime I'm adding in an option to my plot, all I have to do is take my plot function, add a comma, and then put in the option that I want. So in this case, I want to use plot range. And the way you read plot range is I'm making a list with the list. The first list inside this list is my, are my x coordinates, the x range. And the second one would be my y range. So this plot goes from negative 3 to 3, negative 2 to 4 in the y range. Okay, now aspect ratio gives me the dimensions of, of my box that my plot is in. So the way you read this, for example, my, my example here of aspect ratio 4 fifths, the 4 refers to the y direction, the 5 refers to the x direction. So if I said, for example, 1 fifth, I'm going to have a really long stretched out horizontal. It's five times as wide as it is tall. If I have an aspect ratio of one, I get a perfect box. Four fifths is almost a box. It's just a little bit wider than it is tall. All right, now we can combine options just by listing them out or just adding them in. So I have plot range and aspect ratio here. So for example, exercise two, what I want to do is plot my dx function again. There's that, but now what I want to do is have a specified plot range. So I'm going to say plot range arrow, a list with two lists in it. Again, I'm going outside in in my writing style. These first are my x, is the x direction. So I do, I kind of like the negative 3 pi to 3 pi. The next is my y direction. I'm going to go from negative 0.13 up to 1 in the y range. All right, now that gives me a better picture of what my function is doing. And I want to change the aspect ratio. So I'd like this to be kind of a little bit wider than it is tall. So maybe I can do something like 3 sevenths, and it kind of pulls it out a little bit. And you can just kind of mess around with those. There's some pretty common ones. One half is pretty common. All right, so I hope this makes sense. And you can just tinker around with these ideas to get a better looking graph. Now moving on. We want to look at colors, filling, background. How do you change these kind of things? So plot style is how I change my color. If you notice in this example, I have that uh, sine of x squared plus x. 
over a given plot range and aspect ratio, and then I added plot style red, it changes my graph red. So now if I want to plot a nonlinear function and change the color, we can just define some sort of function, and I'm kind of just making this up as I go, x squared plus 3 over x minus 1, I can plot h of x over negative 4 to 4, something like that, but now I want to change my plot range and my aspect ratio. I kind of like that fourth is aspect ratio. And now I want to also change my plot style. And I wanted a green function there. Okay, so like that. So what kind of colors are available to you? Many of them. Actually, we can use these CMYK colors and RGB color functions to specify a color based on the CMYK. That's cyan, magenta, yellow, and Kelvin, or red, green, blue code. For example, here we have our function with a, a CMYK color and it results in this purple. Here's an, another example, same graph, but this time with an RGB color function. So now in exercise four, we want to graph the function again, but change the color base to one of these color functions. I'm gonna paste in my function and instead of green, I'm gonna use the CMYK color function and you have to put in four different numbers here and these are percentages. So I'm just gonna kind of make up some numbers and we get kind of that nice brown color. If you don't like brown, we can change it a little bit. There, there's kind of a nice <laughs> brownish green and you can kind of play with those as you want. Now, what if I wanted to change more than one thing in the plot style at a time? To do that, we use the directive function. So for example, here I have my function and Notice I have plot range and aspect ratio, and then I added plot style, and I added blue, a thickness to it, and make it dashed. And the way I can add all those in is using directive. So plot style directive, blue, thickness, dashed. And I get this nice zebra looking function. And I wanna point out the thickness is very sensitive, so I'd only use about a few one hundredths. Okay, so now for example five, all right, so let's, change green to directive and then inside my directive function I'm add uh, let's make it thick and let's do RGB color and let's add in some dashing as well we'll do small dashing and there we have it so we have kind of a green because with 80 percent green it's thicker than normal and it's got small dashing if you want to change the thickness you go from thick to thickness and we'll do 0.02 and there it is, a little bit thicker. I hope this is making sense. All right, now filling. A lot of times in calculus, we wanna look at filling underneath the curve. So how would I do that? Well, notice this example. I have my plot range, my aspect ratio, plot style, and now I just add in filling. I put filling bottom and it shades underneath. Now here I have a table showing the different kinds of filling. You can fill top, bottom, axis, or specify a horizontal line. In this case, it was 0.3. Okay, so in our example here, we want to use filling style. I have my same function, the sine of x squared plus x, with a specified plot range, aspect ratio, plot style is red with a thick border, and then I have filling bottom, and I have filling style with directive orange and opacity at 50%. Okay, now I'm adding a lot of new stuff, but I think understanding plot style and directive, it makes sense with filling style and directive as well. I can even use color functions for my filling style. So in this example, the same graph, here I have a filling with an axis, and my color function, instead of plot style, I have a color function, and I use blue, green, yellow, which is one of the built-in color functions, and it gave me this nice gradient looking graph which is kind of cool looking. I can easily change this to top, for example. My shading is on the top as opposed to underneath or towards the axis. Okay, so now, for example, exercise six, we want to plot our function again. This time, we want to use a plot style, filling style, and directive to change the plot's aspects. Be sure to change the plot range and aspect ratio as needed. We already have our plot range and aspect ratio. So let's do our plot style, directive, red, and thickness, let's do 0 0.03. So 
So this is going to be pretty thick. And let's do a filling. Let's do axis. And then let's do a filling style directive. We can do light yellow with opacity at 70%. And there it is. That's our same function, but now we have thick red lines and we have the filling with specified values. If you don't like the light yellow, we can change that easily to orange or whatever it is you want. Okay, now what about background? As you can imagine, it's simply just adding in background. So here I have the same function with the plot range, aspect ratio, plot style, the filling, the filling style, and now background set to light blue. And notice how much better this looks than our first graph way up here. We have a lot more detail and a lot more pleasing aesthetic. We can also add in a plot label. So I have the same graph now and I add in plot label, style, framed, f of x. That gives me the name in a box with a font size 17 and all in blue. Okay, so now let's graph our function again. This time we want to add a light blue background. I also want to use plot label and I'm not going to use style. I'm not going to use style here. I'm just going to say plot label f of, f of x. And um, let's go ahead and change the plot style a little bit. Let's do a directive. Let's add in a filling. Let's add in a filling style. And there we have it. Okay, so there's my plot label up here. And you can see I have this thick uh, kind of gray green line with the filling on top, as we said, and a light blue background. Okay, now what about plotting multiple functions? This is very important in, in calculus. So for example, I have g of x here as 1 plus 2x times cosine x squared. Now, if I want to plot them both together, how do I do that? I just change f of x to a list of functions, and I list f of x and g of x, and then they show up together. Okay, so in my example, I want to plot h of x along with another function. Why don't we call, let's define a function k of x, 3x cubed minus 2x plus cosine x cubed, which makes sense. And I'm going to just put in, in a list, h of x and k of x. For the time being, I'm going to take out the plot style. And notice the first function is the blue. The new function is this yellow. Okay, now what if I add in plot style and say green, for example, what happens? Now they both turn green. So I wonder how I can make one of them green and the other one orange, for example. How would I do that? Well, all I need to do is to add in lists. So for example, in this one, plot style, notice I have a list and I said directive red thickness 0 0.01. So my first function now is thick with a red line. And my second one is green. All right, then I can also say filling bottom to fill both of them. And background, I said light blue with a 50% opacity. And so here's what I get. In my example here, I want to plot the two functions from example eight, but I want to change plot style, filling, and background. So I'm going to copy this example here. And this time I want to change my plot style. I'm going to make a list. So my first one, I'm going to say directive, let's say thick, orange, dashed. For my second one, let's let's change the thickness to 0 0.01 and dashing large. And let's make that one red. Let's do a filling to the axis. And let's make our background. I usually like light colored backgrounds. Let's do a light green this time. Let's see what happens. All right, that's kind of cool looking. So we got this light green background. And you can see our two functions with the plot styles that we have specified. Okay, now we can also add in legends. So if we have multiple functions. Sometimes it's confusing to figure out which one is which. So the way I do that is I add in plot legends. And then you can place it. So I'm going to place expressions above. And notice expressions is in quotes. So it puts the plot legend on top of the graph. With, ex with them labeled as their expressions f of x and g of x. If I want to fill between two curves, which is a common thing in calculus, like this, notice I have the filling between the two curves. How do I do that? When I go to filling, 
I put in a list and I say one goes to two. That means that the filling goes from the first graph down to the second graph and this, the two is in a list itself. Why is that? I'm not exactly sure to be honest. So for exercise 10 we want to plot the two functions from example 8 but now we want to create a plot legend and add filling between the two curves. So I'm going to copy my graph from exercise 9. I'm going to change my filling from the axis to the two curves. So the way I do that again is go make a list and say 1 goes to 2 and braces. And then I want to create a plot legend and you know what? I'm just going to use the same plot legend that we had up here. Plot legends placed expressions above and there we have it. So now I have the filling between the curves and I have a plot legend to let me know which one is which. I hope that makes sense. And I hope that you can see that using these options can make your graphs look a lot better. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is how to plot using a table. And uh, the way tables work in Mathematica is it's, it's based on an indexed format. So if, you've, if you're used to like a for loop or series notation, both of those use indices. Table works the same way. So my example here, I'm plotting uh, this table of f of x, which is the function that we've been dealing with, plus the constant n. And I want n to start with negative 5 and end up to 8. So in other words, I'm, pl I'm plotting f of x plus negative 5, f of x plus negative 4, f of x plus negative 3, and so on, from all the way from negative 5 up to 8. We're plotting that from negative 3 to 3. We have aspect ratio, plot style. Look at my plot style is also a table where I'm doing the CMYK color scale and this time I'm saying 40% of K, 10% of K, 10% of K, 10% of K. This time K starts at 1 and goes to 10. So the first graph will have color 0 0.4, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. The second one will be 0 0.4 times 2, 0 0.1 times 2, 0 0.1 times 2, 0 0.1 times 2. And we keep doing that all the way up to 10. When you want different colors in your table and you're plotting, you have to wrap your table in the evaluate function. Otherwise, your whole table is going to be the same color. And it took me a while to figure that out. If you wrap your table with evaluate, you can get these different colors like this. The last thing I added here is I added a box around my graph with frame. I use frame true that turns the box on. And then I use frame style to specify my color. And that's why here my graph, you see this nice rectangle and this aquamarine color. And you can also see how my graphs are shifting upwards, that's because of the plus n, and they're changing color based on the table of our CMYK color function we did here with plot style. And we get this really cool looking graph. Now this may sound complicated, but if you look at it, it's really not. We used aspect ratio like we've done, we used plot style, all I did was turn on a frame and frame style, and uh, that makes sense. We could also do a background. And um, I could have done plot range and the other things that we've covered in here, just adding them in. And that's what makes Mathematica useful in these plots, is when I'm looking at this code, and I'm just trying to copy this code line by line, it looks really complicated. But really what I'm doing is building it up, right? I'm starting out with my function, then I'm plotting. Then I specify other aspects such as plot range and aspect ratio and style and dashing and filling and background, etc. I just add them in one at a time. There are other things you can do as well, um, grids and so on. Guys, I hope this makes sense. I hope this get, helps you get started understanding how to plot with Mathematica. If you have questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help. And thank you for watching.